Today we are at Hebron Brick in Northeast Bismarck and I'm joined by Darren Canodal. He is the fireplace manager at Hebron Brick here in Bismarck and also Chad Lyer from Aero Service Team. Chad, we're going to talk about fireplaces today and the history of the stocking hanging on the fireplace, but we're going to wait for a little while and, and discuss fireplaces first with Darren. But tell me a little bit, if you can, just as you were growing up, were stockings on the fireplace in the Lyer home? I was lucky enough to, when I was about a third grader, yeah. we moved into a house where stockings were able to be hung over a fireplace. There we had go. two fireplaces. And so that's always draw me, drawn me to around Christmas time, fireplaces. And I was thinking last night, this was kind of short, short notice. Right. I'm like, what brings you to Christmas? And I was like, fireplaces, stockings. And then it started bringing up the thought. Why do we hang stockings over a fireplace? Right. How did it start? And we're going to cover that. You, you did a little research on that. But I'm going to turn my attention now to Darren. And we're in the showroom here at Hebron Brick. And, and you've got a lot of fireplaces here on display if people want to come in and take a look. Because it's, you know, the first day of winter was just a couple of days ago. But we have long winters around here. Yeah, that we do. Um, we actually have quite a bit of units on the floor and we can't show them all. Mm -hmm. um, our Fargo store location just remodeled, just revamped and built their new building out there and that has quite a bit more fireplaces on display. But as you see here, this is one of the newer units with the upgraded elevated burner from the Cozy Heat series. Uh, it's called the Nord Nordic. So okay. um, with that said, yeah, we are so much more than just the bricks brick store. Mm -hmm. Most people know us for the brick and stone, but we sell fireplaces, siding, Mac metals, address stones, mantles, um, whatever it takes to finish your project. One of the things, Darren, that surprised me, and I just didn't know this, I asked you how many locations you have, and you guys are, you cover the, the Dakotas pretty well. Yes, that we do. We have Bismarck, Minot, Grand Forks, Fargo, we have Fergus Falls, we have Sioux Falls, and Rapid City. And we also have two plants. One in, of course, Hebron, where we manufacture the brick and supply the country. And then we also have our Mandan plant that makes the block and the retaining walls. Okay, now, I would imagine that there are some fireplaces that are quite expensive, some of them that are on, a, on someone that's maybe on a more tight budget. What is the range, price range, that uh, if people want to come in here and, and look for a fireplace, I would imagine you're able to help anybody depending on their budget. Yes, we can. Uh, we go from, well, it's kind of hard to say. We could do an electric for as low as a grand, or even there's some electrics that I can get for more cost effective than that. All the way up to, yeah, we can get some pretty units. The One of the bigger units, I know, is Pretty spendy, yeah. so. <laughs> well, and there's, they're so aesthetically pleasing, not only the heat, and I'm telling you, we're just standing, we're a few feet away from this fireplace, and that's throwing out a lot of heat. Hebron Brick, like you said, there are so many things beyond just brick, but what is it that, that people come in here, are they surprised when they walk into the showroom and see what you have on display here? Quite often we hear the term, oh, I thought you guys were just a brick store. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know you guys did fireplaces. Well, yeah, we do. We're we're quite popular with mm -hmm. a lot of locals we don't do much advertising but we do do fireplaces when when people are looking for a fireplace i would imagine it depends on the size of the room or the size of the home but what have you found is the most popular feature that people come in and ask for the most popular feature that i'm finding now is everyone wants a tv above their fireplace or they want stockings above their fireplace well with the traditional fireplaces up to about two years ago we turned around and okay. couldn't do that because we had to have the non-com zone in it right. non-combustible okay. materials well now we have heat control where we can duct it to another room or allow that heat to get out that keeps the cooler surface so if a child goes up or a pet goes up touches that they're not going to burn themselves directly it's going to be warm mm -hmm. but it's not going to burn yourself like the traditional units did and you can have the tvs above it you can have the stockings and not worry about anything melting i would imagine that if it gets too hot it's not good for your television either yeah. so all right darren we're going to check back with you in a little bit let's talk to chad and chad you did some research on the history of the stocking and you said that when you were a little kid you, you moved into a house i didn't have a fireplace growing up okay. i do now and there are bread stockings that that go across the front of that and it's it's just a very cool holiday tradition but it had its origins a long time ago. Tell us what you found out. Well, it's a story about St. Nicholas, and I believe it's 
Not real clear on where it was at. I think mm -hmm. potentially we'll just say England. Okay. And um, there was a widowed husband, a widowed man, mm -hmm. and he had three young daughters, and he couldn't afford to feed them to make them move forward in right. life. They were very, very poor. Very, very poor, and there was decisions that had to be made that weren't going to be positive for their lives. Mm -hmm. um, you know, work-related issues where they were going to leave school, whatever. And so St. Nicholas came by and he saw this, he spent some time with the family and he decided to throw some money, either it was in the window or through the chimney. And they had socks drying by the fireplace. Ah. And uh, he threw three little containers or, or of gold, of, of gold yep. and one landed in the stocking. And so that's kind of how it started. Okay. So as as you now are you know you've got children of your own is do you guys do the the fireplace with the socks and do you do little stocking stuffers oh uh, when you've been to my house you yeah. know i have stockings yeah. and i have a fireplace and i have stockings yes and um you know the the stocking has evolved a lot you know that was one of yeah. the things that brought a few but i don't think we need to see it um <laughs> i'm just thinking about okay so we're like 18th century this started in the early 1800s right. Um, the stockings probably weren't very big, you know, they were right. very small because it was just someone's sock. That's how it started. Sure. And uh, then I didn't realize this either as my research, but stockings almost died in the 1800s because Christmas trees came out. Oh, I see. I, I thought you meant stockings for every day. You're talking on the fireplace. On the fireplace yeah. because why would you want this little tiny stocking exactly. when you could have a tree and all these presents around it? You know, that's when present wrapping became sure. a thing in the mid 1800s. And so then I think it became a trend where, you know, you get on your horse and ride out of <laughs> yeah. New York City Just to go, like that. Just go like find that. a tree. Yeah. And that became a pain in the rear. So then all of a sudden the stocking size increased. Ah. And then it yeah. kind of became a balance. Exactly. And if you see most red stockings now, they're, they're great big. All right. Anything else on stockings, or are we going to close things out with Darren here? I'm just glad we have a place where we can yes. hang some stockings here and uh, have a great Christmas, guys. All right. If people want to find uh, Hebron Brick in Bismarck, or if there's a website, how, how can people find out not only where you're located, but what you guys all handle? Yes, we are located at 1420 Interstate Loop, uh, right next to the Grand Theater. And then we do are on the website at HebronBrick.com. Uh, we do have Facebook as well. All right. Chad, it's been a great year. This is our last one of the of the season. We look forward to doing this again in 2024. I want to appreciate your time and Merry Christmas to both of you. Where do we find Aero Service Team? I'm Bismarck and Dickinson. And you can go to our website, aeroserviceteam.com, Facebook. You can call us just about anywhere. Google us. You'll find us. All right. That'll do it from Heber and Brick. I want to thank Chad Lyer. Also, Darren Canodal for their time. And we wish you both a very Merry Christmas. And we're going to take a break. We're back. We've got more coming up on North Dakota Today right after this.